we can uh, we have a huge campus. We've got about was it thirty five thousand uh, folks here on campus. Pretty sure we would need some personnel to handle thirty five thousand people, um, rather be faculty, staff, students. I'm in favor of having you know a stronger force, but I would also say um, I would need that with that stronger force. They definitely need to be more in tune with the community. Because it's a large campus, um, that our patrols that are um, being visible here on campus are much like you would experience in any neighborhood adjacent to campus. But the sensitivities for someone who's had a real experience with police that has not been professional or um, has seemed like they have been targeted is something that uh, we want to um, address. You know, I work hard with my team, my leadership team, to scrutinize every individual that we hire. A significant background checks, psychological evaluations, doing more than just checking their references that they give us, going to their neighbors, finding out what they're like when, you know, they don't realize they're being observed because of the responsibility that they have and the expectations that we have that they treat all people fairly. I've had good experiences, I've had uh, not so good experiences. Uh, I would say definitely now pretty good experiences, but when I first got here, um, we had I think an entirely different uh, force uh, of folks that were on the force here on campus. We used to walk a lot from, uh, from here to down in the student union. Um, and was stopped on campus and asked, where was I headed? Could you provide an ID? Even though this is an open kind of campus, it's a public institution, but was asked, where was I headed? Where's my ID? Um, what am I doing on campus? I was in a suit uh, and I'm like, I didn't have my name badge on, but I was just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and I had to like tell them like, uh, well, I'm actually administration. Um, and I actually know the person that's in charge, not only of the police department, but also of public safety here on campus. And from that moment was told, okay, hey, everything's fine. We just really wanted to know what you're doing. And I was like, but it's a public institution. I'm not go. I'm just walking from an another place to another. Um, and I may be in a little hurry, but I'm not running. I'm not causing this, this disarray or anything or a probable suspicion, but just walking. Armed public service men and women, I would say I would rather them be concealed. It doesn't have to be the flashy Glock 9 on your, on your, on your hip. Uh, um, and so I would prefer uh, concealed um, and carried for our, our armed um, public safety men and women. Um, but uh, then on top of that, um, I would say really providing a sense of security and safety among our students, faculty and staff doesn't require, I would say, weapons um, to present that sense of safety. It may sound harsh, but the reality is, is that just that fast, um, when somebody decides to point a gun at you, um, your, your life is over. And so these are the most difficult. There's no other job where somebody's asked to have that responsibility to make that decision in just a split second. The officer is always going to have to react to whatever's presented at them. You know, our, our officers are always training in de-escalation techniques and uh, being able to communicate with individuals in a way that uh, helps uh, calm them um, um, to avoid using force is our goal. Um, but when time is that we have to, there's the bowl wrap, but uh, there's also um, arrest control techniques. And so those are ways that uh, without doing permanent damage, officers can take a hold of somebody and gain control uh, long enough that they can secure them until they can later calm down and be in a secure area where they can be released. And, um, again, our best tool that we have is actually our uh, communication skills and ability to be able to talk to people. How do you establish a relationship? Um, you can come to the center. The center, like for instance, the Black Cultural Center is open. I don't want to see you in 
actual full uniform showing up and like, ah, this is, I mean, of, unless there's like an emergency or something. But if you're just popping by, you're trying to build community um, and relations. You are a staff person here on campus, just like myself. And so with that, I would expect you to build community. Um, I wouldn't expect anything less. And so with that, the, the biggest measure that I think police officers and our public safety can kind of take is just how do you bridge community with, with our students, with the faculty and staff. Uh, how we can develop the police department to be as responsible as possible to all the needs of our community. Um, one of the things that they suggested was um, if at some point I could identify a way to fund and create a position that is a racial bias incident response team manager. Any incident that happens here on campus that um, may be race-based and um, for the intent of harming others is investigated and, and uh, if it's a criminal act we investigate it through the police department but if it's not, if it's First Amendment protected, we still document it and report it and uh, monitor it to see if it may be connected to something else that is either happening here on community, in our community or elsewhere. And so uh, I'm very excited by uh, the things that we're doing there and having that person uh, as part of our team to make sure that all the resources, not only of public safety, but of the university as a whole, are brought to address it is key. Understanding like protocol when it goes around. Let's say something was to go to happen on campus and we say, hey, there was a black male, had a gun, pulled the gun on campus um, and they yell on the radio, there was a black guy with a gun. We need more descriptions. It can literally be, you're not saying no clothes, you're not saying this, you're not saying that. I could be walking from this space to another, and because I am black, we would automatically assume or go into a, a, a kind of some type of profiling, and then things can get heightened. And so I would say definitely more measures in taking as far as in descriptions, and definitely uh, more uh, understanding of different different backgrounds, different uh, student voices, things of the nature. Partaking in community, I think that's the biggest gift that public safety can have because, again, they are providing public safety. And in order for it to, be, to make the public feel safe, they have to also be within community.